Hey, everybody. So how you doing, Greg? Hey, Andrew. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we got Greg Benz here doing luminosity masking in Photoshop. So uh, welcome, everybody. I already see that there are people joining already. So I see Andrew Nichols from the UK. Good to see you here, Andrew. Hanna's here from Belgrade, Serbia. Good to see you here. Oh, wow. And uh, Andrew's saying hello to Hanna. <laughs> Leroy from Norwich, England. Good to see you, Leroy. And then Hanna says, hi, Andrew. Always nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you as well. See you here. Stephen Williams from Milton Keynes. And missing going to the LFL. Not sure what that is. Sounds like a conference, though. And we got Bobby from New Orleans in New Orleans. Good to see you here, Bobby. Dave Ellison from the Liverpool, UK. Wow, I'm impressed at how many Europeans we have. What is it? I know, it's right? They're late. taking over. It's pretty late, yeah. <laughs> you got UK in the house. Sharpie from Durham, UK. I like that name, Sharpie. That's good. So, yeah. So, let... Uh, let us know, everybody, where you're watching from, and welcome. Don't be shy. Let us know. We got Bobby from New Orleans. Any other American peeps here? <laughs> it's all right. I like the UK, though. I lived in London for about six months back in, um, was it the late 80s, early 90s, so. That's funny. I did the same thing. I was living in zone two for six months back in 2000. Hugo Mize from Belgium, also Europe. Yeah. Here we go. We Here got go. To Kathy in uh, Wyoming, Cowboy State. Mezzelin in uh, Kazanlok, Bulgaria. And I'll be greeting some German, Germany. Nice. Or European, I like it. So, yeah, so more and more people are coming in. So tell us where you are watching from. And then uh, let me also remind you that um, if you are watching from Facebook, to please give StreamYard permission to show your name and profile pic. So I'll be able to credit you when you comment or ask questions. That's in the groups. Underneath the live is a link, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Give that a simple click. Give the permissions. Come on back. And let's see, we got uh, Ron from Mississippi. Another Ron from Charleston. Hey, South Ron. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some familiar names here for sure. Nice. Carol from Australia. Nice. Excellent. Cool. And you've gotten like full on Photoshop swag there. You got like all the all the pillows. Yeah, let me just turn this. Uh, where is it? Uh, not a comment. Um, yeah, so I, I was pretty active during the Adobe Max that they had online. So uh, I won, like, I think there was like a tour of the Photoshop offices, and they had like a quick little contest at the end. If you, you know, text or email something, and I won some pillows, and then I think I won a t shirt as well, you know. I get the, the PS I love you. You get that one? That's my favorite little uh, thing. See, I'm not sure if it says that. It might say it in the back of one of those. But, uh, yeah, they have things on both sides. So, yeah, um, we got Stephen from uh, Prescott, Arizona. Good to see you here. Dean, Dean Smith from uh, Saskatchewan. Ken in Texas. And Adelbert Ellen Scard. Hope I'm saying that right. And the Faroe Islands, nice to see you. Here. Yeah. And you did it right. I can see that you gave permission to StreamYard, so I can see your name and profile pic. Thank you. And we have Kathy Carson Newman from Rosamond, California, one of my uh, admins, moderators in the past. Good to see you here. Great photographer herself. We've got Adele, evening from Jordan. Oh my gosh. Francis from Seattle, and Tammy from Michigan. Great to see everyone here. Appreciate it. So uh, before we begin, let me uh, just give a little shout out to StreamYard, the multi-streaming app that makes it all possible. I love StreamYard. It's very professional, but it's so easy to use. So here's a little intro to StreamYard.
Thanks, StreamYard. <laughs> uh, so yeah, thanks everyone for being here. So we're going pretty good now. So I've got uh, Shelly from Northern California. Cool. So uh, Greg, do you want to uh, introduce yourself? And take it from yeah, there? absolutely. Well, Andrew, thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Greg Benz. I'm a uh, landscape and cityscape photographer based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, in addition to being a working photographer, uh, I'm generally known as a uh, software developer and instructor uh, in the um, luminosity masking space. And if you've never heard of that, uh, don't worry, we'll explain what that is. Um, but uh, definite uh, passion of mine where it really puts you in the driver's seat and gives you control over Photoshop. And I'm gonna just jump right in. And Andrew, uh, let me know, can you see my screen okay here? Yep, luminosity masks. Yeah, perfect. Well, uh, Andrew's gonna post some uh, links here, but uh, for any of, you, any of you who are interested in uh, the software I'm showing, Lumenzia, or the training courses that go with it, um, sharing a 25% off discount code you'll share there. And uh, if you're not, and you uh, don't already have a tool you use, I also have a free panel called Lumenzia Lite. There's a link for that here as well. So whatever your background, just wanna make sure you've got some tools to dive in and explore because this is definitely, um, it's a deep topic and I hope I whet your appetite for it today and we'll cover some great use, uh, use cases for it. Um, but it's the kind of thing you can just really keep going deeper and deeper and deeper. So wherever uh, you may be today, I hope we push you a little bit further and get you excited to, to try even more with luminosity masking in Photoshop. Great. And I just wanted to say that, um, of course, I will be posting the links with the description uh, for the recording after as well. If for any reason you cannot find the links, feel free to message me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, wherever you find me. So I'm here for you. Just let me know. I will give you the links. Take it away, Greg. All right. <laughs> so I thought I'd just start with a few before and after images to give you a sense of um, what is possible with luminosity masking. This first image is actually one that I'll demonstrate for you today. But this is a shot of this stairwell that had this you know, really interesting eyeball pattern in the back of it that I wanted to enhance. And so I needed a way to help bring that forward in the image, help make it stand out. And with the use of luminosity masks, was able to refine it to look something like this, where it's a much more compelling image that tells the story that I want to tell. And it's, it's true to the original, right? It has all the core elements there, minus a few things I've cloned out, like you know, um, fire suppression stuff on the walls, whatever. Um, but taking that pattern of dots that when you're there in person, it really stands out to you, but somehow in a photograph, it just feels a little flat and lets me create the narrative that I want to help share that pattern. So it's very clear when you view this, like what was interesting about this scene or another example here out in the American Southwest in the desert, we have all these like great sandstone formations and I wanted to help show, you know, the, the texture the dimension of the space, as well as make for a more interesting sky. And so with the use of luminosity mass was able to post process into something like this, where I'm able to grab the, the tones in the actual image. That is the original sky. If you look at this sky here and the final, they are, they are consistent. It's not a sky replacement. Uh, and all that extra depth and detail you see that that's all information which is in the image. I'm just able to take control and specifically make things brighter or darker, control that process as I make my black and white. Beautiful already, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was a fun, fun, crazy scene. I love getting on these trips in the middle of nowhere. And and so often, you know, I used to come home with pictures like this and just feel like I just couldn't share. And I feel like this is a lot closer to sharing my excitement for the place. Uh, another scene here, this is an example of uh, exposure blending uh, It's part of my exposure blending master course where you can take multiple different exposures or take the same exposure and actually process it different ways and recombine it with itself to come up with something much more interesting like this, where we're able to extract more detail from the shadows, more color from the highlights, ultimately just pull up more of the color and detail that's latent in your raw files. Our raw files contain so much information but it can be very difficult to extract that information and luminosity mask gives you control to go and specifically refine areas like the wood of the tree, the color of the sunset glow that, you know, those little details, it gives you that kind of precision to refine the image. Uh, and, and one last image here, just showing a variety of different topics. This is uh, Minneapolis where I'm from. And obviously this is a pretty extreme shot. I'm looking directly into a sunset and the foreground looks nearly black, but there's a tremendous amount of detail here. 
And I combined this with two other shots. I had a slightly different cloud, and then I had the city lights later in that same night. And I brought those three together to come up with this finished image. But the fundamental tones, all that detail in the foreground, that is latent in this original raw here. I'm just bringing forward another cloud and these city lights because, of course, at the moment of sunset, the, the city lights are either not turned on or they're just not bright enough to stand out. So I'm combining some different content and the luminosity mask helped me with all of these different facets of that, whether that's bringing out the detail in the foreground, whether that's lighting up the different lights in the city and combining totally different exposures from like 45 minutes apart, uh, just gives you that kind of control to create the scene that you want. Um, and, and I'm going to try and show a variety of topics today, but I think the most important thing to know about this is it's not limited to one particular subject. Most of the tutorials you'll see on luminosity masks tend to center around um, landscape, but it really can be used anywhere in Photoshop where you might use a selection or mask, which is effectively anytime you want a little bit more control over the process. And that's really what luminosity masking is. I it's see. giving you control to make a more natural edit so you can work on the tree, the cloud, the sunset, whatever that might be in the scene. And then uh, just to set the stage with a few concepts, and I'll demonstrate these so they make more sense as we go through it. But uh, if you're not intimately familiar already in Photoshop, we have layers, of course, where we can blend different layers. So we have different content. In this view here, I've got a, a brighter exposure and then a darker exposure, and then I've got some adjustments to make above that. And I'm bringing this content together but then we use masks, which are these little black and white images to the right that control where you can see the layer. And a mask is basically pixel by pixel opacity. And if it's white, you're revealing. And if it's black, you're concealing. So this first layer mask is saying, hey, take this layer and all the white stuff, which is the sky, use that. So I'm taking this darker, more colorful sunset that just the sky part of that and then merging it down with this brighter exposure, which is gonna have more detail in the foreground. So this is essentially an, exo an exposure blend. That's how, that's how this works with this masking concept. Now, these masks are very, very powerful and they're what controls what you can see in the layer, but oftentimes you don't wanna go straight to making the mask. So this is an example of a luminosity mask, but I didn't just click one button to make the mask. Usually the best way to make the mask is actually through a luminosity selection. Uh, and selections, um, I'll show you how that works, effectively allows you to paint the mask by hand. So rather than just hitting one button and here's my sky, I actually brush it in with a selection which controls where the paint can go. So it's like a stencil. So it only lets me paint in the sky areas to give me that nice finished result. So that's just kind of the key concepts. Let's jump in and I'm gonna switch over to uh, Lightroom where we can start kind of the first example. And I've got this image of a friend's dog here. And, you know, this dog is like a lot of, you know, pets. It's not going to sit still, has no idea what I'm doing. I was lucky to just get it in focus, but it's underexposed. Um, the color is pretty bad. There's distractions in the background. There's a lot of things about this image that I don't love. And so I want to clean all that up. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start the work in Lightroom and process the raw to a certain stage. And then we'll work out with luminosity mass to show how we can take things even further. So if I go to the develop module, uh, I just want to do a couple of things. I want to make it black and white because that color wasn't helpful. Uh, let's make it a little bit brighter, maybe punch it out by like a stop or something like that. And just add a little bit of contrast. All right. So, I mean, the image is definitely vastly improved, but there's a couple of things about this that I don't think are very ideal yet. Uh, the, the white of the fur around his eyes is a little dingy, it doesn't stand out. It doesn't really draw your attention to this dog's face. Uh, and then you've got this very distracting background element here as well. And trying to refine these things in Lightroom, you can certainly push things further. Um, I find it a little bit cumbersome and not quite as precise as what we're gonna do in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna send this over to Photoshop at this point by right clicking. And I'm just gonna say edit in, open as a smart object in Photoshop, which is the way that I like to work. We don't really need a smart object to do what I'm about to do here. So here we're in Photoshop and hopefully you can see that okay. Looks great. Yep. Okay, perfect. So, so this is really just kind of two things I wanna edit, right? I wanna bring out the white of the fur and I wanna work on this distraction in the background. 
And so just to, to illustrate, you know, how we might fix this. I mean, this is basically a white backdrop at this point. I made it so bright and I can just push more white into this image. And to do that non-destructively, I would just go and add a solid layer and just choose white. And of course, with this solid layer here, it's, it's painting white and the layer mask is white everywhere, meaning it's revealed everywhere because white reveals and black conceals. So what I really want is to just have white in the areas over this little distraction here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna invert this mask to be a black mask. And if I just hit command or control I, that will invert from the white to black. So now it's still a white layer, but it's not doing anything because it's completely invisible. When it's all black, it's all concealed. It's, it's no different than setting the opacity of the layer down to zero. Now, if I go and grab my brush, I'm gonna hit B for my brush, and I was just set, I usually would like to work with kind of high opacity, low flow. If I were to just hand paint this, right? I mean, the, the left hand side of this here, and I guess switch my brush mode back to normal. So, you know, this part on the left, that's no problem. But as I get near the ear, I'm going to run into problems, right? I'm going to paint over this ear. I need something to help protect me from going over the edge of this ear. I could, I could spend the time and go very, very carefully by hand but it's a little cumbersome and it's gonna be hard to be very accurate. So I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo that. Let's just step back. And this time I wanna paint in this area, but I want some protection that keeps me from painting on that ear. And that's exactly what a luminosity mask can do. So a luminosity mask or a luminosity selection, sorry, in this case, um, is a selection based on the luminance of the image, the brightness of the image. So what I wanna do is I want to adjust parts of the image which are not black. The ear is black, so if I have everything but black, then I can paint over this area with very fine control. And I could do something like, you know, um, go grab a quick selection, you know, hit W, try and grab this. But when I do this, you know, what Photoshop is giving me is a hard edge. So if I hit B for my brush, when I brush here, it's gonna paint to that edge and then it's gonna stop. If I hide the ants, you can see there's like a very abrupt transition there. It's not necessarily gonna look very nice. And, and it's probably passable in this case, uh, but a lot of times it's not, it'll look jagged and kind of funny. So what we really want is something that kind of tapers a little bit at the edge. So we nicely get from the white to the black without just immediately stopping. So I'm gonna undo that again, and I'm gonna deselect Command D. So I have no selection active. We're back to the starting black mask. This time I wanna create a luminosity selection. It'll be based on the, the luminance here. And this is where I'm gonna to start to reach for Lumentia. This is the software that I've created here. Uh, I've also got Lumentia Lite, which is this free panel. I'm not gonna demonstrate it here, but I've got a video on my site at the links that Andrew's gonna share that can do a lot of the same things as well. But with Lumentia, you've got several different buttons, but effectively there's three parts of the panel. The top part, all of this stuff here, these are just different previews to let you determine, hey, do I wanna make a mask based on color or things that are light, that's what L stands for, or mid-tones or D for darks, or maybe the vibrance of the saturation. You can make you know, these, don't have to be just luminance. They can be color-based selections as well. So it, it really has expanded, but these are basically just different previews. So if I go click on something like L, I get a preview of the things which are light in the image. And this is previewing as if I was gonna create a layer mask and it creates these orange, temporary layers that are just meant to help visualize the process. If I were to click on something like D for darks, it's basically inverted. All the parts of like, you know, the eyeball, the nose, where they're black in the image, those are the darkest and therefore they are the most selected. And, and you know, what is selected or visible with mass and selections is white. Uh, and so that's what that's showing here. And I could even go through like these mid-tones, like, you know, zone A is like a dark mid-tone. This is kind of like an Ansel Adams style zone system. And then B is a little brighter and C is like dead center and D is brighter yet and E is the brightest stuff. So we wanna go and find some preview of this, which is gonna help us work on the areas we wanna adjust. Like this would not be a good preview because everything that's black is protected. And this is exactly where we wanna paint. So it's protecting the ear, but it's also gonna prevent me from painting in the white that we wanna fix things with. So I'm gonna go back to L, which was this you know original lights this is probably one of the most commonly used buttons in the panel to select things that are light. So this is my preview. 
And then the bottom of the panel has two different areas. Here we can apply it as a masker selection and then beneath that are tools to refine. So the, the whole panel overall, you just preview, then you apply it. And then if you need to, you can refine it further below. That's really kind of the three part system. So we've got our preview. I'm gonna click cell, which means to load it as a selection. And you can't see any marching ants right now. There's a preference in the panel that says to hide the marching ants because they're very distracting in a luminosity selection. They, they don't work quite the way you would assume they do. Uh, and so it's better to just hide them. But the cell button is lit in green to show you that there is an active selection. So I know I've got my protection active, I've loaded that. And now when I brush, it's gonna guide my brush. So if I click on my mask here, hit B for my brush. If I try and brush on this ear, it's not really doing anything. But if I try and brush over here, it is because I've protected these areas that were black in the preview, but I have selected these areas that were white. So I can go and very quickly and easily brush out this little distraction. And in doing so, I'm still protecting all the natural nuance around that ear. When we zoom in here, there's no weird hard edge. I can go and paint around here and just keep painting this in until I get this nicely transitioned area that doesn't have some telltale hard edge to it and very quickly and cleanly clear out that little background distraction. And I did paint a little bit in the ear there when I was kind of demonstrating that. So I can always, you know, clear something like that out if I need to. Um, you know, it's not that I can't paint anywhere because the mask is proportional. So the areas that are gray, you have some ability to change things. So it's just biasing my brush. And in this case, I deliberately was trying to screw with things and I you know, got a little bit of it, but it really does protect you from making unwanted changes. So that's that's kind of the first use here. The second one, I want to go and work on the eyes and, and such. Actually, I'm going to hit Command D to deselect and just hitting B from my brush, switching over to black paint, just hit black over the ear because I didn't really want to do that on the ear. Not that it really matters. I don't think you would ever notice that little tiny bit. You probably can't even see it over streaming here. But so now I want to work on these eyes. And so I want a different adjustment. I don't want to just paint with pure white. What I want to do is just brighten based on what's already in the image. So I'm going to reach for a brightness contrast layer. And that's this little icon here. And when I double click it, I can adjust it. And what I want to do is make things brighter and add some more contrast. But I don't want it everywhere. I don't necessarily want to lighten his chin. I don't want to blow out the pixels on the left side of the face here, the edges, the top of the head. Those are not areas I want to adjust. I want to have a little more precision to hit the right parts of the face. So I'm going to hide this with another black mask. And in the panel, if I hold down Alt and click on Mask, I had a black mask. No different than if I Alt click the Mask button in Photoshop. Either one's going to do that same thing at this stage. So now I want some way to paint on the lighter pixels here. And so once again, I'm going to create a luminosity selection of the things which are light. In fact, I can create the same selection. I'm just using it with a different layer. And so I'm going to click on Cell if I like this, although I wouldn't mind maybe making it a little bit more generous. So the, in, in the panel here, this slider lets you refine how selective it is to the light. So this is like the most generous light selection. If I want things that are really only the brightest, I can slide down to like lights four or go down to lights, you know, five and a quarter. You really get to very precise levels of just how light is the thing that I'm selecting. But I think, you know, up here at the top, I think this is probably about the right amount of selection. I can see all the fur very clearly and the darker fur around it is going to be protected. So I'm not going to be messing with the dark fur, just the lighter fur. So I click on cell and be for my brush, make sure white is the foreground paint because white is going to reveal on our mask and painting through our active selection is going to reveal this adjustment over these areas of fur and helps to resize your brush to be roughly the size of the thing you're trying to target in the image. Um, so I'm constantly making the brush a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller as I brush. I'm just using the left and right square bracket keys, if you're not familiar with that. I'm also painting um, using a Wacom tablet, um, which, you know, anytime you're doing brush type work, which is a lot of work with layer masks, I highly recommend using a Wacom tablet or some kind of a pen-based tool. It's just much more natural and intuitive that that's how we move our fingers with such precision, whereas a, a mouse is a pretty blunt instrument. And so it's that's like a brick. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, it's totally. Brick. Trying to be uh, precise with a brick, you know? Yeah, because you know your fingers are precise instruments, right? Your, your fingers have a lot of dexterity and control. 
But when you move a mouse, you're not really using your fingers very much. You're really using your elbow and your shoulder, right? right? So you're, you know, your shoulder is not exactly like you wouldn't paint with a paintbrush strapped to your, to your forearm, but that's kind of what a mouse is like. Right. You know, you, <laughs> um, so if we take a look at this adjustment here, you can see how it's lit up the face there. And it's just one of these subtle little things, but it brings a lot more attention. Uh, and I wouldn't even mind lightening up these eyes. The challenge with these eyes is they're so dark that they weren't really in my selection and they're not being adjusted that much with this layer. So I'm gonna go back to my white layer and just use the white layer and just bring a little bit more of the catch lights in these eyes here. But let's just take a look at the overall adjustment. If I alt click on the original layer here, here's what we did in raw, which was definitely a lot better than you know the unfinished raw. But then with the use of a couple quick adjustments in luminosity mass, able to take it to just a completely different level. Um, we get this precise control to bring out the fur, remove that distraction, and yet not spill over the edges, not cause other unwanted problems in the image. And if we go and, and take a look at the mask we've created, so if I alt click on a mask, I can see it full screen. So here you can see, here's what I brushed. I brushed in the two eyes and I brushed in that distraction in the background to get rid of it. And if we zoom in here, look at the nuance of that mask. There's no way you would hand paint something with that level of precision, but with a luminosity selection, you can. Or if I alt click on the rest of the fur here, you can see just how precisely it hits all that fur in his face to give you a lot more control, contouring around the nose, around the other eye. Just a, it's just a level of control you just don't have with a brush. Um, even if you could achieve it, it would be much more time consuming to do so. So that's, right. that's ultimately the reason why we use these luminosity selections is to have more precision with the adjustments that we're creating to an image. Cool. Yeah. So, Andrew, are there any questions that have popped up so far? Because I don't want to race too far ahead of people. And I know I kind of just covered a lot of ground already. Right. I think they're just taking it in. But uh, yeah, any questions? Let us know. Yeah. Questions, comments? Yeah. All right. Well, fire away at any time. I definitely encourage you guys to, to reach out with questions. Uh, I'm going to open up a, another demo here. In this case, I've got an interiors image. I've already processed the raw about as far as I can. And what I don't love about this image is this outside is pretty blue because the natural lighting outside has a different white balance than the artificial lighting inside, which is much more of a you know tungsten warm lighting. And so naturally no single white balance gives me the look that I want in this image. So I'm gonna go fix that by going to Photoshop and correcting this color imbalance through luminosity mass. So I'm gonna right click and again, edit in, open as a smart object in Photoshop and just give Photoshop a second to catch up. And so here I've got a uh, camera raw smart object. So I, I have all the raw data and I do want to use it to re-white balance here. I need to create a proper exterior view and then I can layer the two together. And with a smart object, if you just hit like command J, the normal way we duplicate things, the problem you create is that each of those new smart objects are linked. And if you change one, you change all of them. And I want to create an independent copy of this, which you can right click and just choose a uh, new smart object via copy. Or if you're using my Lamentia panel, you can shift click on pre-blend or even shift click on raw. And you see raw's lit green here that tells you this is a raw smart object. But if I shift click it, it gives me this independent copy. So now I have two versions of the image that are independent from each other. And if I change this one, it won't change the other one. That's why I wanted to duplicate it with that special approach. And so now I'm gonna double click it so I can go and edit it and we can white balance for the exterior. And no real trick here, we just go grab the white balance picker. I'm gonna go for this rock here. So it's white balanced off that rock. And of course the interior now looks terrible, you know, which is the challenge here. In, in RAW within Lightroom or Adobe Camera RAW, we can't, precisely change all these little things. We can't white balance here and white balance here. Yes, there's some local corrections. It's definitely not the same. It's very hard to merge the two together. So all I really want to do is create two versions of the image, one which is white balance outside the windows and one which is white balance inside the windows, and then we'll just bring them together. So that's all I have to do here. I'm going to say, okay. And so now I've got my two versions on top of each other. I got the one where the inside looks great. I got the outside one here where the outside looks great, but the inside looks terrible. So what I need is some way of applying a mask to this that's gonna allow me to 
target these areas outside. And what's really nice about this is all these areas outside are kind of uniquely blue. So remember I'd mentioned earlier that, you know, luminosity maps are not just about luminosity. They can also be based on color. With Lumenzia, I can just click on the color button. There's multiple ways to work with color in the panel, but this one works really well for this image. I can just simply say, hey, I want to work with these preset values targeting cyans and blues and create a mask. And when I use this, what it's going to do, it's going to go find anything that's cyan or blue in the image, and then it's going to create a mask, which is going to target those areas and reveal them. It's going to be white in the areas that are otherwise you know, cyan and blue in the image that we're viewing right here. So I click on mask. And you can see it's created this layer mask. If I alt click it, you can see how it's targeted these window areas and the reflections on the table uh, as well, because there's some blue light reflected off the glass there. And when I make this layer visible again, you see how it corrects those outside areas. And that's it. We're actually done just by using the color button on this other version. And if we zoom in here, you can see these are like really clean, well done edges here that, you know, from before we've got all that kind of nasty blue and afterwards we've color corrected it even on like the reflections on the table here, nice. which you get that same blue. So really quick and simple fix there. Excellent. And I wanted to just uh, respond to a quick question. Hugo says, I uh, got to go. Hope there's a replay. So yes, I will be posting the link to the recording after and uh, make sure to, uh, when you find that link, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel for other live events in the future. All right, man. Thanks, Hugo. Great. Yeah, I know Hugo well. Um, all right. So for this next one here, let's take a look at this image we started with in the slideshow. I'm going to edit in, open as a smart object in Photoshop. So this is the stairwell with this eyeball in the background here. Uh, I've already uh, processed this image a, a little bit to get rid of the distractions I had in the original RAW. This is not the RAW. I mean, it open as a smart object, but this is not a RAW smart object. In fact, you can see the RAW button's lit red in this basics panel comes with the Lumenzia, so it's actually a two-part panel. This is just telling me this is not raw data here. This is just a regular smart object. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna light up this pattern of lights on the wall. And I need some way of doing that with a mask. I can't just do something like a curve because that would take all these lights in the stairwell and blow them out, this light in the background. There are a lot of things which are brighter in, in the image there. Um, and what I, you know, also I'm struggling with is this pattern of dots, like some of the background areas are pretty dark. Some of the background areas are pretty bright. Like the, the patterns here change a lot. It's hard to say that there's any particular rule that would define the dot because some dots are bright, some are dark, some backgrounds are dark, some backgrounds are bright. But the one thing you can say about this pattern overall is each of these dots is brighter than its surroundings. And in Lumenzia, there's this difference button, which allows me to target things which are brighter or darker than the surrounding pixels. So if I say lighter, it's going to go find the pixels which are lighter than the surrounding pixels. And it started with a default 15 pixel radius. I can adjust that with this slider so I can make a different level of comparison. Like if I go and grab a bigger value and say, hey, you know, let's compare over like a 272 pixel range. Now you're starting to see these big chunks of, of brightness. So you can really dial this in to get the level of precision you want. I think in this case, something around like, probably around 20 pixels or so, let's try this here. It starts to give us a nice pattern uh, around these dots. I'm gonna go just a little bit, maybe like this here. And you can see how these dots are nicely isolated. It's not 100% perfect here, but it's more than enough for what we need. And if I have to clean it up later, I certainly can, but you can very clearly see it's targeting these areas here. Now I'm going to go and just quickly create a uh, brightness contrast layer and give it a black mask. I'll be able to paint onto this. Um, and I'm also going to make the brightness contrast layer just much brighter. So this layer is kind of ready and waiting to make things brighter. And I'm going to convert my preview into a selection. So just like I did before, I click on the cell button and that preview is now my active selection. I can see the cell buttons lit green. So I know I have that selection active. So rather than just painting freehand at this point, when I hit B for my brush, I'm going to be painting on these dots, the areas which are brighter than their surroundings. So as I paint on these dots, you see how it's lighting up those dots? Mm -hmm. It's not lighting up the whole wall. It's just lighting up the dots. Nice. And, you know, I can very quickly, you know, I can do a, maybe a double pass, lighten things up a little bit more. But you can see how this just really nicely kind of isolates these little patterns. 
and get these little back areas here a little bit. So the stuff on the railing, light this up here. And you can imagine trying to do this by hand. If you went through with a brush and try to paint perfect little circles that didn't go outside the edge on each one of these dots, you would spend a lot of time but using a luminosity selection, which is working from the image on your behalf, right? It's cutting out all that work. We've got a much more precise result. And you can see here, if we hide this, here's the original. And here's what we did to it, just by simply adding a brightness adjustment and then painting through this difference mask, which is just looking at, you know, where are these pixels brighter than their surrounding pixels? Excellent. Yeah and kind of rolling along. So again, anytime there's some questions, please fire away, but I don't even keep rolling here. I'm gonna go ahead and close these other images real quick here and then bring in these two. So this is kind of an exposure blend. I've got a, a brighter exposure and I've got a darker exposure. And you can see as I'm moving here, there's a little bit of rotation. This is a handheld exposure. So I need to align these. But what I wanna do is I wanna take this brighter exposure, which has great detail in the shadows and then bring in this better highlight detail from this other exposure and just combine those two together. So I'm going to right click, edit in, and I'm just going to choose to uh, open as layers in Photoshop this time. So a lot of times I do my exposure blending with raw, um, but I'm just going to stick with uh, this right here as is. So give Photoshop a chance to catch up. And you can see here we've got our two different versions and you see that kind of jumpiness there. So I need to align them. I want to put my darker exposure on top so I can start to brush that in with a layer mask. And that work can be quickly facilitated in Lamentio by quickly clicking on the pre-blend button. So it's just kind of setting up the blending work. And here we have a bunch of options, but basically I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and sort the dark one on top. That's how I usually like to blend things. I'm going to let it align the images to fix that alignment problem. It's going to add a black mask, so it's just ready to go. Uh, and locking the layers just helps prevent me from painting on the image instead of painting on the mask. So I'll go ahead and say blend layers, bring this through and it's done. You can see now it's aligned, ready to go. I probably should have chosen the option that would help automatically crop these edges, but I'm just gonna quickly grab the cropping tool in Photoshop here and trim these edges. Cause of course, after the alignment, the pixels aren't quite the same. So I'm gonna just get rid of that alignment gap there. And like that, accept that, see if I got that right. And yeah, that looks good. Nice. So, so at this point, we can see we've got the, the darker layer on top. It's got a black mask ready to go, and it's got this little X on it. It's disabled. So when you have an X on a black mask, it's temporarily doing nothing, which is the same as having no mask, which is the same as having a completely white mask. All three of those conditions reveal the entire layer. And this is very handy to see your content when you have it masked out or partially masked in or something like that. So now what I want to do is find some way to target the areas which are lighter so I can paint them in on this layer mask. And once again, a lights selection is going to help me grab these lighter pixels. So I think that's the way to go here. So I just click on L and Lumenzia for a lights preview. And I think right out of the gates, this first preview is pretty good. It's got a, a nice targeting of these brighter pixels. And I can kind of hand paint these things down here. That's not really a concern for me, but near this complex edge, that's where I need help. And that's where I really want to have these things brighter on one side and darker on the other. So that way I've got that nice separation to help guide my brush. So I'm going to click on cell to load that as a luminosity selection. And then I can click on my mask, which will make it active. So I got rid of that X, which made it hidden. So it's no longer visible. It's ready to go. It's ready for me to start painting on it. I've got my active light selection and I'm gonna hit B for my brush, make it a little bit bigger here. And I can start brushing in these areas to reveal the darker exposure. And this is exposure blending. I'm bringing in two different exposures, combining them together to get a much nicer, much better result here. And you can see how it's not darkening the top of this cavern here, it's just darkening the areas that were really bright and bringing through that detail. If I alt click on this mask, you can see that nice separation. I can, you know, go and paint however I need to there, look at the mask or look at the image. Um, and once I've got that edge work done, I can just get rid of my selection and just kind of quickly 
brush the rest of this to bring in to taste here, maybe make this a little bit bigger something like this. And, you know, if I, this was, you know, an image I was going to do for print or something, I would spend a little bit more time, but you can see that it doesn't have to take a lot of time to get an image worked from this original, which is just looking awful because there's such a high range of contrast to this image here. We've brought back the original detail in this image. I can take this even further and really refine this if I wanted to. I can go with my brush, just work in these areas. I've reloaded my selection. I hit the uh, Command Shift D shortcut, which reloads the luminosity selection I created. And we can see the cell buttons lit green. So whenever that's lit green, you know that I've pulled up the selection. So it's the same one we already created, but when I'm whatever I'm working in that edge, I want that extra protection to make sure that I don't paint over the lines. But you can see that really makes a transformational difference. And um, there are so many great things you can do with exposure blending. And what I'm demonstrating here is the part that, you know, people just sort of assume, like I'm taking a brighter exposure and a darker exposure. That's great. Um, that's the reason a lot of people try and do HDR. You can do it much more cleanly um, through exposure blending with luminosity masks. And you're going to have you know, better looking shadows. You're not going to have noise. You're going to have a number of improvements. But above and beyond that, you have much more control. You can change anything. It doesn't have to be just exposure. So if this was a, a scene of a sunset, I could process the white balance and the color in that sky in a totally different way than the foreground so that the foreground's optimized and the sky's optimized and I bring them together for one great looking image in a way that you just cannot possibly achieve uh, in the raw stage alone. So nice. Yeah. Any questions on that one? Uh, more like comments, though. So, uh, Alan, as as you went, Alan said, excellent, and then also amazing. And then my friend Andrea, who goes by the name of Happy Teach, she says, wow, and then also amazing transformation. Awesome. Yeah, it's nice. To Thank see. you. Yeah. All right, I'm going to close that. And... Um, this so last one here, this is a more advanced uh, blend for sure, but just want to show you some of the more limits of, of what's possible. So in this case, I've got this scene that I love, but I've got this shadow on the foreground of a tripod because I'm shooting uh, on a tripod and behind me was a street lamp. Uh, and so what's happening is that street lamp is throwing warm yellow light forward and then it's uh, yeah, at the blue hour here. So the sky is throwing blue light down. So in the shadow of the tripod is the area that the sky is lit with blue, but the street lamp behind me, there's a cast shadow. So it's not coming through. So it's darker and it has a color imperfection, but we can fix this as well. And Greg, can you take a quick question? Yeah, please. So Kathy asks, uh, did you say what your brush settings were? Was the flow at 10%? Oh yeah. So um, I vary this a lot, um, but generally speaking, I work with high opacity and low flow. And some people do the reverse. Opacity makes more sense to a lot of people intuitively, um, but flow gives you more control. Let me show you an example. I'm gonna go and just create um, just a couple of quick dummy layers to demonstrate. So I'm gonna have a black backdrop and then let's put on top of this uh, just a blank layer. And I'm just gonna grab some color. Let's just go grab like red, right? So I'm gonna shrink my brush down. And so if we take this up to 100% flow, and opacity, and I'm gonna use a hard brush to just eliminate any sort of uh, variables here. So everything's just a straight brush, right? We get um, I'm painting with black. Let's make sure we paint on the foreground. So here's that red paint, pretty straightforward, right? That's just kind of a normal brush, uh, not very useful because it went all the way to the maximum right away, nothing softening in the edges. So let's go and add a little bit of softness to the mix. So I use hardness around like zero to 25% usually. So now when I brush, I get that. That's a much nicer looking brush stroke. I mean, if you look at the first one, it's like scalloped the way that Photoshop works here. You get this transition. It's, you know, if you don't have a, a, a softer brush like this, you're going to end up with weird edges. You're going to leave visible brush strokes in your image. Now, painting all the way to the maximum is usually not a good idea. So you have a couple options. In the brush, I could take my opacity down. Let's take this down to like, say, 10% or so. So if I paint with this, I'm just getting this dingy, dark, partial transformation to the red. It's going 10% of the way from where I was to where I'm going. So I get 10% of this change. Now, if I let go of my brush and come in a second time, I can go another 10%. And 
And every time I let go, I can do another one and another one and another one. You can build up. So if I'm at 10% opacity, by the time I do 10 brush strokes, I'm basically going to be up to this value here. But I have to let go each time to do that. And when I'm brushing here, once I've gone over an area, going back over it, it doesn't get any stronger. So I can't brush back and forth to build up to a result. What if we go the other way around? If I take the opacity up to 100%, I take the flow down to like 10% here. Now, when I brush, as I go back and forth, it just keeps building up to a stronger result. So I have much more control. Or I could take that flow even lower. I go all the way down to like 2%. And so now I can go, I can go make this part a lot brighter, maybe add a little bit over here. But I, I can do the whole thing with one brush stroke and get a very nuanced result the way I like. You see here, you see brush strokes. Here, it all kind of blurs together in a nice smooth way. And I don't have to lift my hand off the, the you know, Wacom tablet or let go of the mouse button. I can do it all in a nice controlled way. So that's why I like to work with high opacity and low flow. Usually, and, sorry, go ahead, Andrew. And I was just going to say, and, and I agree because, uh, you know, by using the focus on the flow, it's progressive. And it feels like if you were to paint with, say, watercolor. So it feels like the way a real brush would be as you keep applying more paint. Yeah, it's, it's you know, when you're at 100% opacity, so the opacity is the maximum amount you can get to in one brush stroke, right? So at 100% opacity, I can go back and forth all the way to the maximum red. But the flow is the speed at which you get there. So you could do both, right? I could set the opacity down to like halfway. And then if I brush back and forth here, it'll keep building up. But no matter how many times I go back and forth, in a single brush stroke, if I don't let go of it, I can never get all the way to the maximum red until I let go, which I just did, and then I come back a second time. Then I can go and hit it further and go halfway again. Right. So, you know, but you really don't need to get too fancy. Usually just high opacity, low flow. Flow in the range of 1% to 10% is usually where you want to be. Uh, higher flow rate if you're not seeing much of a change. Lower flow rate if you're seeing too much change. It's not much more complicated than that. Um, and if you're using a, a Wacom tablet, tablet or some kind of a pen, this is where it's really going to make a big difference for you. Great. So, all right. So I'm going to get rid of these two layers. These were just for demonstration. And we're just back to the image that I sent over uh, from Lightroom here. So we've got this tripod issue. We want to get rid of this tripod. And as I said, you know, there's a problem in both the luminance, the brightness, and in the color, it's very obviously darker and it's very obviously blue. And in fact, we can visualize that in the panel. Um, if I go and select a certain area and just click on this check L, it's gonna check the luminosity. And the, the reason I did the selection is to kind of boost around that range. You can very clearly see the difference in brightness values there. And I can just clear that with the X button in the panel. Or uh, a lot of these buttons have little shortcuts for extra options. And you can see here, if I hold on the shift key, it's saying I'll view hue and sets. So if I shift click on this button, I'm gonna check the hue. And here we can see very clearly, I've got a magenta color cast, whereas the shadow is very clearly blue. So this is basically removed. All the, the saturation has been boosted to 100%. All the luminosity has been set to a neutral value. And all I see now are the colors of my image. And that's just a quick way of demonstrating that we have two problems we have to solve. We need to fix a color problem and we need to fix a luminosity problem. So I'm gonna need two different adjustment layers to achieve that. And this shadow is a pretty complex shape. So I'm also gonna use a luminosity mask to target those areas much more precisely. So let's clear out a little visualization, just going back to our image. And we need to create those two different adjustments. Um, I think I wanna use a curve to go fix the luminosity problem. And this is just an unadjusted curve. And I'm gonna use a uh, hue uh, or a color adjustment with a solid fill, so let's go grab that. If I go click for a solid color, uh, I just say okay for a moment in Photoshop, hide it. When it's hidden, now I can double click and now I can pick from the image itself and not see that full screen. So I'm just clicked right in this little tile here to pick up the background kind of magenta color here. And I'll just say okay. So that's my, my color fix here. If I turn this on, I just see the color everywhere and of course, I don't want the luminosity. I just want the hue and the saturation. So I go down to the color blend mode. And so you can see that would kind of knock that out. But I obviously don't want it everywhere. We're going to have to use a mask 
to guide that. Um, so we'll, we'll do that in a moment. And then for our curve here, we need something that's going to help us uh, target that as well. And I'm not really sure what curve adjustment to make. It's actually going to help to have a mask on this first so that I can brighten up the shadow and see that it matches its surroundings. So I'm going to go, uh, let's go create that uh, mask first. So in the panel, I'm going to go back up for another preview. Uh, I'm going to choose a different type. We haven't really played with these midtones very much. And if I grab this little picker to the right, this is the zone picker. When I click on this, it allows me to go and pick something right from the image. So I can go pick something from the shadow. And when I say, OK, it's going to target those shadow areas. Now, what it's created right now is a very generous selection that's including things which are brighter and, or darker than it both. So it doesn't look like much yet, but we need to tweak it a little bit. And that's kind of the power with these sliders and these orange layers that Lemenzi is creating is you can customize them. And this slider on the right here is the precision. If I drag this down, then it's more precise. You start to see there's a bit of a difference there between the tripod shadow and the surrounding tiles, but not enough. Uh, because if we look at the image, I'm going to hide these layers for a second. We see the original underlying image. I mean, these values are so close. The difference is mostly color and a little bit of luminosity. So what I want is to make a bit more separation based on the colors of the image. And I can do that right in the preview by adjusting these layers. Here, The very first one here is this color conversion layer. And if I double click it, I have control over the color response. If I play with the magentas, you see that you know if I bring this over to the right, I'm starting to get a lot more separation here. Now I can play with the blues a bit, and you, know, you start to find like where is that point where I've got the kind of separation I want. I think that looks pretty good. You've got a very clearly targeted area towards the shadow of this tripod, and I'm going to go ahead and use that. If I just click on the curve to make it the active target, and click on mask, it's going to create a mask directly. So I'm not going through a selection. I have it already masked on this layer. If I alt click it, it looks exactly like the preview. It's very much a what you see is what you get system. So that mask is exactly from the preview as a 16 bit luminosity mask ready to go. And now if I adjust this curve, we'll see it adjusting these areas of the shadow. And the easiest way to fix that is I'm going to go grab the targeted adjustment tool from the curve, go click on something here, like in the middle. And it creates a little point on the curve. And now I can just hit the arrow keys on my keyboard and nudge one little bit at a time to start neutralizing that. And you can see how that's starting to knock that out. In fact, if I go and make the color neutralized everywhere, you see that it's basically gone. The luminosity error is has been fixed at this point with just that little bit of a curve adjustment through this mask. Now, at this point, the luminosity fix is going all over the place. I don't want to apply it to the doors and the lights. And you know, that's definitely not right. And the color fix is going everywhere as well. So that's just too much. So I need another way to dial these in and I could refine these masks or I can just add another mask to control them both at once. I can put them into a group and put a mask on the group. And that group then can be further isolated with another mask. So what I'm going to do is uh, shift click so that both of these layers are selected. And I'm going to add a group mask by going up to group in Lamentia. I'm going to hold down alt or option and then click, which gives me a black mask because it's holding down alt. So I've got the group with both of these layers inside it. And there's a black mask on the group. So right now, nothing is showing because the entire group is hidden. But wherever I paint on the group will then show through these layers with their secondary masks. So I'm just going to hit B for my brush. I really don't even need sort of a, a fancy selection or anything. I'm just going to shrink on my targeting here. And as I brush over the tripod, painting on that mask, I'm revealing both the color correction and the luminosity correction over that shadow to remove it from the image. And it's pretty crazy, right? But you can completely wipe out this shadow in this case by just having a couple of quick corrections and then having that luminosity selection to, to target things. If I didn't have that luminosity mask, it would spill all over the surrounding tiles and I wouldn't be fixing the dark areas. I'd be brightening everything, including the pixels that were already bright. So that gave me the control I needed to make this very precise adjustment and just wipe out that tripod. And yeah, now that's, image, that's excellent, that's excellent. Yeah, right? Like there's just that level of control and, and that's what this is all about. I mean, we zoom in here and 
you know, like it's just, it's gone. So um, that is, that is why we use luminosity mass to have precision, you know, in, in this case, like I said, that's a much more advanced kind of thing because uh, we adjusted on the color as well, right? So we picked a particular tone and then we tweaked how much it includes or excludes both blues and magentas to help further isolate based on the fact that that tripod was a different color than the rest of the bricks around it. Nice. And this this place itself is it a uh, a performance hall or museum or what what is it? It is yeah it's it's a performing arts center in in Kansas City so it's a lovely right. building yeah beautiful yeah thank you um, well we've uh, ripped through those pretty quickly we haven't stopped a whole lot of questions so um, those are all the the samples I wanted to bring here to to show this but hopefully you guys have seeing just how you know powerful and flexible these luminosity masks and selections can be to blend exposures you know remove tripods remove distractions behind a dog lighten up its fur i mean anything you can think of where you want to have precision in the work you're doing uh is a place where you can use this and um it can open up entirely new approaches right you probably would never think to just simply make a couple of adjustments here to use a, a solid layer and a curve to remove that tripod, I mean, I think most people would go in and try and use the clone tool and try and deal with the fact that each of these bricks is like progressively smaller and smaller and smaller. And that's a painful clone job. Um, you know, and, and you can't use this technique on every single shadow. It works here. Not every time do you have like soft light and soft light shadows, but um, it just gives you that kind of flexibility to, to make much more precise controlled adjustments. And it just opens up new ways of, of interacting with your image. Yeah, very nice. So are there any uh, questions or comments? Snow? Let's see. Uh, Happy Teach. Andrea says it's beautiful. Let's see. Vladimiro jumps in to say hello, Andrew and Greg. Hey. He did a one a uh, live about NFTs. And then uh, Andrea says, yes, I am now a fan. And Vladimiro says, love Lumenzia, great tool. Yep. Thank you. Francis says, this is amazing. Great tool to remove the tripod shadow. Yes. So um, so let's remind remind everyone that um, you know they can get Lumenzia at, you know, I'll put it in the to the link to the recording. It'll either be in the description or when you click on the link to go to it on YouTube, it'll be in the description there. You will see a link to Lumenzia, which is bit.ly. Uh, Lumenzia, and then um, there's Lumenzia and the Master Course Bundles, uh, which is the bit.ly Lumenzia hyphen master hyphen course. And don't forget that Greg is offering the free panel and actions to create luminosity mask at gregbensphotography.com slash luminosity hyphen masking hyphen tutorial. Sound good? Yeah. <laughs> I see more comments coming in. So, yeah. Hanna says the explanations are so thorough that they exclude the <laughs> need for questions. Yes. Thank you. And Ron says, I picked up Lumenzia about four months ago. It's a real game changer. Excellent. Awesome. Great to hear it. Yeah. So, yeah, do look for those links in the description. And, uh, and then uh, Vladimiro says, when we start using it, we can't live without it. Oh, that's yes. great to hear. Yeah, I feel the same way. I created it to solve my own problems, and it turned out other people wanted it too. So nice. Yeah. And happy teacher, Andrea says, sounds awesome. Yeah. So yeah, do do remember Lumenzia, Bitly, Lumenzia, Lumenzia, and the Master Course bundles at bit.ly Lumenzia Master Course, and the free panel and actions to create luminosity mask at gregbensphotography.com luminosity masking tutorial. So uh, if there are no more questions, just want to say thanks, everyone, for attending. And thank you so much, Greg. It was really great. Yeah, and, thank you, Andrew. And just to remind everyone that uh, it can subscribe from my uh, examples of digital art, more Photoshop and photography-focused live streams and Photoshop tutorials on my YouTube, Digital Art Drew. So it's either just youtube.com slash digital art drew or do a search for digital art drew. So thanks so much, Greg. It was really great. And uh, I will be sharing the recording 
everywhere. Um, and we have a couple more comments. Thank you, says Andrea. Happy teach. And uh, Ken, thanks, guys. I'll give it a try. And let's see. Kathy, ha I've always wanted to try out luminosity mass. Perhaps now is the time. Yes, now is the time. <laughs> you love them. It's a, it's a good challenge. Be ready for a learning curve, right? Getting into these things. And once you start getting up that curve, there's just no going back. It will change how you edit, how you shoot. It's awesome. Right. And then we have, um, thanks, Andrew, for one more great stream. And Greg, for this amazing tool. Kathy says, fantastic. Thank you. Kian says, thank you both. And Dave, Dave Ellison, thank you for the amazing info. Uh, and then there was a, a technical question, but uh, LB was asking a tech problem. My email was hacked or something. I now have a new email and receive no more update links. How can I change my email? Uh, just, think, uh, just email me and I'll fix it for you. I'm Greg at gregbensphotography.com. We'll get you set up. Great. Yeah. So yes, it was excellent. And thanks everyone for attending. Look for the recording and uh, don't be shy to subscribe to my YouTube, Digital Art Drew. And uh, thanks, Greg. Have you on again? It was quite, quite excellent. Beautiful work you do. Thank you. Thanks for everyone for uh, for attending. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.